If you're not already using thermal cameras for diagnostics, then this video is probably going to change that. I'm going to show you three really cool tests that you can do with these tools. However, there are loads that you can actually do. If you've got any other creative ways of using it, then just let us know down below in the comments. So today we've got these two products from Top Don. Um, we're not going to go into the mega details of them. I want to get onto these cool tests to show you. However, we've got the TC004. So this is the handheld thermal imaging camera. I really like that. Um, I've been using that quite a bit. And we've also got the one that plugs onto your phone. So the main difference really between these two is this one probably has a slightly better resolution. I like it because I can record videos easy to share with you guys. This one is a little bit more rugged, also a little bit more convenient. So you can just pull it out, switch it on and away you go. 15 hour battery life, rechargeable as well. Let's stop messing around and get into these tests. So the first test we're gonna look at is battery drain testing. If you've heard anything about using thermal cameras for diagnostics, this is surely the first thing that comes to mind. It is literally the cheat code for battery drain testing. It's just so cool. So um, I'm gonna show you a little demonstration here and then I'm gonna go over to the vehicle that we've got with a battery drain problem and bust a few myths or just some things that you need to be aware of when looking at battery drain. So we've got two plastic covers here and you know, to, to the touch there, they feel about the same temperature. However, if we point this over at it, we can see one of them there has got you know, a real heat spot on it, okay? See that? That one's glowing red. If we take a look with the TC view, the reason I've got this cable on here is I opted to go for the USB-C iPhone camera, and this is still the older iPhone. However, I'll probably update this soon, so I wanted the latest version, so uh, that's why I've got this cable on there. Um, you just choose the right one for you. So if we just come over the top of here, we can see that this is picking out the temperatures. It picks out the highest and the lowest temperatures. That there where the hotspot is about 19 degrees Celsius and the trim itself is about 15. Okay, so you can see it's clearly very different. So for the big reveal, what we've actually got under here is a relay with the coil activated. Okay, so you know, it doesn't draw very much current. In fact, we can quickly check it with this amp clamp. And we're looking at anywhere between 50 and 100 milliamps is what we're drawing here. Probably say closer to 50. Remember these clamps here are not very good for like really low accurate measurements. And you can see here that this thing is just, you know, glowing red. So that's really cool stuff. And what I really wanted to show you there is that you don't have to be pointing directly at the component. That component will radiate small amounts of heat that will be absorbed by everything around it. And as long as the car's been left overnight in a cool spot or, you know, it should glow up like a beacon. Over to our problem car. Unfortunately, I'm a sucker for old BMWs and I recently picked this one up for a personal project. However, when the owner got it out of the garage, I noticed that they connected the battery back up before driving it out. So instantly I thought there, this has got a battery drain problem. That's gonna be really fun to look for. So uh, I got it back, sure enough, uh, with the battery left connected over a few days, it, it completely killed it, it went down to zero volts. So after a quick look, we had a look at what current we were drawing on here. And again, just for a quick indication, we're getting around about half an amp, around 500 milliamps. So, you know, it's not going to take very long to drain that battery off. So what I did was charge the battery back up, left the car overnight, came back the next day to see what we could find. Okay, so coming from back here, really, there's nothing that's majorly kind of sticking out. What you will notice is that these metal parts do reflect heat from the surrounding areas. If we go over to the fuse box here, again, there's nothing, nothing screaming out. Uh, there's the fuse box actually. Mm, nothing really going on in there. So quite interestingly on this car, it may be because none of the fuses are up here, but sometimes uh, the fuses will show up as warm during a battery drain test. Now, interestingly on this car, everything inside the fuse box was 
all around the same temperature. So that's just one to be careful of. Don't always assume that the fuses are going to be warm during a battery drain. I suppose it depends on ambient temperatures and also how much current is being drained through specific sizes of fuses. So a small amount of current on a big thick fuse isn't going to make much difference, but it's just one to be careful of. If we use the uh, mobile camera here, you can actually see the resolution is a little bit better than the other one, but there's nothing at the minute screaming out. Let's go and take a look over at the fuse box there. And again, there's nothing that's, you know, really showing up red. You can see that there is a difference in temperature, but it's only about kind of half a degree. You see like in, in this bit here, which is red, it's about 11 and a half degrees. The top of that inlet manifold there is about 10 and a half. So maybe a, a degree, a half a degree. So it's quite good at picking up the differences in temperature there. Let's go and take a look inside the car. Okay, so a quick glance here. We can see that we've got a couple of hot spots there. We've got one in the middle of the dash around the radio area and one over by the glove box. Let's uh, try and take a closer look. So yeah, you can see there, look, the radio is glowing red and also something behind the glove box there. Maybe the glove box light or something like that. So that's what we're pointing at there. Amazing tool. So if we actually get in the car now, I've got the, the phone version there. Again, you can see that the, the mobile one just has that slightly better resolution. See, that's picking up the radio around about 17 and a half degrees. Yeah, everything around it is about 14. So, you know, quite a difference there. And then behind here, look, I can actually see it. The glove box light isn't going off. So what I also noticed was that the radio wasn't actually uh, fixed in. So let's just disconnect that there. So it looks like the, the pin isn't actually hitting the, the switch to take the glove box light off. So if we just disconnect it, we can come back and just double check what we're getting there. Pull in 150 with it disconnected and then about 200 with it connected. So yeah, just over 50 milliamps there, that's perfect. I'll leave that connected. So the second thing that I've got to show you is actually for finding things like wind noises and water leaks, water ingress and things like that into the cabin. Really easy to set this test up, very creative. Okay, so what you're gonna to want to do is set your climate control to maximum heat, or if you live in a really hot area, select maximum cold okay with the air conditioning so we're going to start this thing up and we can already see look we're on maximum heat maximum fans i've also just chose to use the the screen demist and the face vents i've turned off the foot vents actually so on those two there and the reason i'm doing that is i want to try and keep the heat around kind of the top of the cabin if you like and then you're just going to want to give that a minute to get hot. So what we're going to look for is any heat escaping through the gaps. Okay, so what I've done to set this up is I've, of course, just put a tiny problem in there. So I just rolled up a tiny bit of masking tape and put that on the door seal to create a small kind of gap. And if we point this over at the car now, you're looking for those kind of seal areas of course, you can see the reflection of the heat off the gap, uh, the window. However, down here, look, you can see there's a there's a hot spot. In fact, if we come around this side, it's a bit easier to see. See that right there? So that is right where we've put that tape. Okay, so glowing up like a light bulb. So I've set a similar one up on this side, look, and then just scanning across. We can kind of see a bit of a warmer bit there. It's not as pronounced as the other side, but if we come in a bit closer, we can still see that there's an excess heat escaping in that part of the glass. And what I've done there is I've just trapped a piece of 
wire in the glass. Really, really cool. So the third thing that they're really useful for is diagnosis of heating and air conditioning systems. So that's both sides of that. Things that are there to make the cabin warm and also the air conditioning that's designed to make the uh, cabin cold. So there's lots of parts of that system that we can use this for. Let's take a look. Okay, so starting inside the car, we're going to talk about the heating system first. So, of course, sometimes you might get complaints that there's no heat in the cabin or you're getting a difference in temperature. So if we take a look at across these vents, we can see that they're all kind of around about a similar temperature. So it's coming out about 39 degrees. It's quite difficult to see that temperature on there. You can see it's picking out the highest spot. 41 degrees, about 40 degrees again, and again about 40 degrees. So of course what we'd be looking for is you know an equal kind of equal temperature across all of those. Okay, and if one of them was, was really cold or one side was much colder, it could indicate that you've got a problem in the in the air box or with the heater matrix out there, which we'll go and take a look at now. Okay, so just on the on the heating system then, we've got a few things going on down here. So down the back here, we've got the two pipes going to the heater matrix. So you can see one going in and one coming out. And then we've also got the coolant pipes here. This is the one that's coming into the thermostat housing. And then down there, we've also got the radiator outlet so there's quite a bit here for us to take a look at let's see what i can show you with uh, the handheld so if we go down the back here we can see those two pipes there so one of them is coming in at 126 fahrenheit the other one 113 so you can see the target there it's easier to see the target if i put it there Ultimately, we're seeing warm going in, slightly less warm coming out. Okay, so that shows us that we've got flow through the heater matrix there. Also, those pipes should be roughly similar temperature to what we're seeing here. So we've got 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we just look down here, we can see that that radiator outlet pipe is not warm yet so of course the thermostat hasn't opened and that should match up with looking at the the radiator there so you can just see the fan blade just where the target is and the radiator behind it is still cold so nothing going on there we might be able to see a bit better detail using the mobile version and actually down there look we can see those two pipes Again, this is giving us readings in degrees Celsius, so we can see one of the pipes is at 52 degrees, the other one 43. So it's pretty cool that it's uh, automatically finding the highest temperature on there. I quite like that. Um, yeah, coming back down here then, we can see that, yes, that does match around the same temperature. So we're getting around 54 degrees on there. And we can see the radiator outlet is at around about 23 degrees. Okay, so thermostat hasn't really opened yet. Yeah, that, that pipe's still pretty cold. Okay, so we're inside the car now. We're looking at air conditioning. It's not a very warm day today. Uh, it is British summer, so what can we expect? I've got the air con on also. These vents are coming out nice and cold now. So what we're gonna to want to do really with air conditioning is just make sure that all the vents are around about the same temperature. So if we look on here, we can see that going over onto the, the passenger side there, We've got about four degrees coming out of the uh, inlet. Remember, air conditioning is gonna drop around about 15 degrees maximum. Again, we've got around three degrees here, one degree over this side. Sorry about switching between my units. And then we've got about three degrees, four degrees centigrade over here. So really we've got 
pretty kind of even spread here. Potentially this one is, is slightly colder than the others, but there's not a massive difference. When the air conditioning uh, refrigerant is low, what you tend to see is, is a drop as you go across. That's because the evaporator inside the air box is cooler on one side of the other because there isn't enough gas to actually kind of cool the whole thing. Let's go and take a look outside. Okay, so what we've got out here then is the air conditioning compressor, which is just actually behind here. This is the air con pipe going back into the compressor. And then you can see just here, this is the air con pipe coming off the compressor. There it is spinning around there. So it's kind of buried. So what we should be expecting really is, is warm gas coming out of the compressor, going across here, up to the condenser. That's gonna cool that gas a bit, and that then goes off to inside the cabin. So all of that pipe should be warm. Once it goes in the cabin, it comes back out again, and this is physically cold. I can feel this one's cold. It goes back into the compressor. So let's take a look how we can use thermal imaging for that. Okay, so now it becomes a bit clearer on what we're looking at. So here we can see that, that cold pipe coming back. Okay, so that's going into the compressor. And then here we've got the warm pipe coming out of the compressor. Now it's a bit harder to see because we've got all these hot coolant hoses around there. However, if we look down the front, you can see it going across the bottom there. Goes across the bottom. Goes up there, look, up to here. Okay, so this is the hot gas coming from the compressor to the condenser. Now, ideally, the pipe coming in should be slightly warmer than the one coming out. Let's have a look at what we've got. So we'll just use that target there. So we can see this one here is about 34 degrees Celsius. That one going the other way is about 35. So, I mean, I don't know if there's a bit of a coating on the pipe there. Let's have a look down here instead. So yeah, we can see that that's about 44, 45. And about 34 going back towards there. So we've dropped around about 10 degrees on the condenser which is which is about normal really and you can kind of just see the condenser down there as well with that fan spinning so that pipe then goes across into the car okay so if you get a blockage in that in that pipe anywhere you're going to see you know a hot on one side and cold on the other okay if that happens then of course the air conditioning isn't going to work and um, coming back onto the outlet then, this is what, what we want. This pipe coming back to the compressor should be cold. Now we can't quite see the expansion valve. However, what you should expect to see on the expansion valve is one side, oh we can, hot going in and then cold coming out. 